Hello anyone and everyone, I am Echo, and today we're exploring uh, Aviary Attorney. Uh, in the last episode we've been walking around investigating stuff, trying to find clues and things for the case. Right now, we're at a bit of a loss. We've got a lot of areas, and I think we've already wasted three or four days, and we only have six days till the trial. So we've only got like two, maybe three days left. And we've got a lot of places to check out. Um... Still gotta go to the Chocolate Emporium, there's a La Canard GIU, which we definitely couldn't get anything else there. Um, the Palais de Louvre, that one, uh, I thought I covered it entirely, but maybe not, because it still has the clock next to it. But the La Canard GIU also has the clock next to it still, and we definitely did everything that was available there. So I'm thinking... <clears throat> I'm not sure. Um, huh. Actually, crap! Did I forget? Do, does the one do the ones with the clock next to them not mean that those are important ones? It means that those ones take a full day to go to. Maybe. I'm not sure. These are. Yeah, this one, this one, this one, <coughs> this one, and this one do not have clocks next to them. And they're all closest to the, uh, like, if this, assuming this is the center where we start from, then these ones would be the closest. So, then these ones would be farther away and therefore take longer to get to, so maybe that's, maybe that just means that I can actually, like, visit the La Halls Market. Let's try it. Let's go to the La Halls Market again. See if we can talk to the, uh, I don't see any sign of the flower girl. Yeah, probably because you scared off with your crazy tact and finesse strategy, dummy. Or maybe you scared her with your horrendous and inappropriate flirting technique. I'll have you know that I can flirt like a peacock in tail fanning mode. We really don't have time for this discussion. Let's just continue our investigation elsewhere. Okay, yeah, so that didn't skip a day. Okay, so I was completely wrong. Never mind, so I don't have anything to worry about, I don't think. I'm 90% sure that I covered the entire Palais de Louvre. I know I covered Le Canard Show You. So... Just the library and the chocolate emporium. So let's go to the chocolate emporium. I think it's more important to get some actual evidence. The library was just to learn more about the Spaniard, and that's uh, not priority. Chocolate emporium then. Away. <clears throat> Lander. Welcome, welcome. Welcome to Lander Hegelslack's chocolate emporium, the finest Belgian chocolate shop in all of Paris. I am Lander Hegelslack, the founder and owner of this establishment. And I am J.J. Falcon, defense attorney. Good day, monsieur. Oh, lawyers. Very fancy. I must say that I once dreamed of being a lawyer, but, well, circumstances wouldn't allow it. It's a funny story. You see, when I was a young boy, I befriended the son of a Hungarian attorney. Falcon, you have to help me. What is it? It's the smell, Falcon. It's overpowering me. It's demanding that I lay waste to the shop. For pity's sake, restrain yourself, Sparrowson. Oh, but I'm rambling, aren't I? So, are you messieurs here to buy some chocolate? <coughs> yes! No, no, no. We're actually here on business, monsieur. Business? First things first. We believe, we believe this chocolate wrapper originated from your shop. Are we correct? Oh, yes, yes. That is indeed the trademark, trademarked Hegelslack wrapper for genuine Belgian Hegelslack chocolate. This was almost certainly bought from this very establishment. Very good. With that established, there is something else we wish to ask, monsieur Hegelslack. Who bought this piece of chocolate? Could the chocolate have been poisoned? That's all. Who bought this piece of chocolate? Can you tell us who bought the chocolate that was contained in this wrapper, Monsieur Hagelslack? I'm afraid not, Messieurs. Not just because of the matters of confidentiality, although that is a factor you understand, but because I couldn't possibly know that. I thought elephants never forget. My memory is impeccable, Monsieur, but you must understand that I have dozens of customers a day. There are hundreds of people who could have potentially bought this particular item. Hmm, so your memory is good, but you need further information. If we were to give you the description and name of a person, would you be able to tell us whether they purchased something from you? Oh, yes, yes, that I could, that I could probably do, Monsieur. Let me think. Who to ask about? <clears throat> well... Can we actually ask him about all of these people? Do we have enough time to do that? That'd be kind of... cool. Hmm. Let's ask him about Catherine Marjorie Singh. Yeah. Catherine Mary Singh. Have you ever served a flower-selling swan named Catherine Mary Singh? No, monsieur. Hmm. What are you thinking, Falcon? I'm not sure, to be perfectly honest. If she were the chocolate fiend, then our investigation would have become much simpler. 
But since she's not, let me think. Who, who to ask about? Rufus and Powell? Eric Pork? He said he wasn't even in France at the time of the murder. Fontaine, hunting people. Piero. Okay, that's uh, nothing over there. Vito Dremio, Judge Maxime, Rabington, Mousy, Quanel, Just Valerte, Juan Corrido. Juan Corrido. <clears throat> Have you ever served Juan Corrido, this Prince of Spain? A Prince of Spain? Oh, monsieur. Well, that's good to hear. Our clue would have turned into a dead end if our own client turned out to be the chocolate fiend. I did once serve a princess from Malay, from Mali, if that is any help. You see, I met the girl while hiking through the Himalayas. Please stop. Let me think. Who to ask about? Major Howell. Oh yeah, Major Howell was the guard. If he ate the chocolate bar, that means, and if the chocolate bar was poisoned, okay. Let's save him for last, because I want to ask about the other people. Or, uh, maybe not everybody, but... Can we ask him about ourselves? Have you ever served me, J.J. Falcon? No, monsieur. Why? Would you like to buy some chocolate? Um, no, maybe later. Messieurs, I'm growing tired of these endless inquiries. Perhaps you should come back another day. You know, Falcon, it's possible that we just haven't encountered the chocolate media. Oh, no! Rather than coming back here every day and making aimless guesses, we should wait until we have someone specific in mind. You might have a points person. Crap! I didn't know there was going to be a limit of asking him only three. Thank you for your time, Mr. Hagelslack. We shall return when our investigation is progressed. Anytime, Mr. Ah, oh, fuck. Occasionally, special cinematic scenes marked by an exclamation mark will pop up on the map screen. Okay. These cinematic scenes are only available for one day before disappearing, but they take no time to visit. Their viewing is entirely optional. I'm guessing there's one right over here? Les Loops. Okay, let's check it out. A storm is brewing, my brother. Word of the royal assassination attempt has spread. The proletariats grow confident. The bourgeois are cowering. It won't be long before we have rioting. And then, a revolution. Okay, then. I wonder who those were. Alright, well, back to the Chocolate Emporium. Unfortunately, I didn't even think that, uh... <coughs> I finally decided to sample my fine chocolate. Perhaps you've just returned to ask more questions. It's just the questions today, I'm afraid. Alright. Put this piece of chocolate. Let's cut right to the chase. Let's ask about Major Howell. Have you ever served a member of the Royal Guard by the name of Major Howell? No, monsieur. Are you sure? Yes, monsieur. I have, served, I have served many soldiers, but I don't recall seeing a major here in recent memory. What does that mean, Falcon? Have we lost our lead? Not necessarily. It just means that Major Howell didn't buy the chocolate. That may have killed him. There's still the possibility that someone bought the chocolate for him. That's our lead. That's who we want to find. I see. I did once serve a high-ranking officer of the British Army who was on his way to Zimbabwe, if you want to hear that story. No, I don't want to hear that story. Let me think. Who to ask about? Well, crap! Don't tell me I just... screwed it up. Huh. Maybe Judge Maxime? Oh. Oh no. <clears throat> we could ask him if he's ever served himself. That would be funny. Uh. Ugh. Who could have. Who, who might have been in a position to give him that piece of chocolate? Probably somebody who visits the. Museum? Hmm. Um. These are all people from the first case. Alright, the mother and her bouncy daughter who begged us for money inside Cash Shot. Yeah, what happened with them? I hope they pop up later. Uh, Quark. Crap, I think I'm locked into this. I can't ask if the chocolate was poisoned, can I? Alright, well, crap. Just Valerity. <clears throat> Have you ever served a war veteran turned police inspector named Just Valerity? No, monsieur, let me think. Who to ask about? Damn it! I think I just, like, wasted all my days. Um. 
parrot with a big mouth, a big hat, and a big attitude. A hunting beetle that seems like a bit of a gun nerd. Uh, uh. <coughs> <coughs> hmm. These guys. This, sure. <coughs> Have you ever served a porcupine art aficionado named Eric Pork? No, Monsieur. I'm tired of these questions. You know, five as possible. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Damn it. How would we figure out who's doing that though? Crap. Alright, um, the halls. Check out the halls again just in case maybe that lady's calmed down a bit. Yeah, no, she's still not back. I think I screwed this case up right. Um, alright. Let's go to the, uh, the library, the bibliotheque. See what we can learn here. Here for a little light reading, are we? Not quite spare I'm following the hunting beetle's advice. Don't eat poisoned pork? The other piece of advice, that if you want to learn about a member of royalty, we should hit the library. Oh, that makes sense. Say, Hawken, I've been meaning to ask, since we're in a library and all, are you a classic literature fan, or do you prefer more, more, more modern works? <laughs> Readings for squares. I love how that's always an option. If you want to be the falcon that hates reading, you can do that. that that's nice. Uh, well, I mean, modern for their time is kind of classical for my time. I don't know. I don't even... Whatever. Modern. I like modern novels. Have you read The Three Musketeers yet? It has heaps of romance, intrigue, and action. You would love it, Sparrowson. Don't patronize me, Falcon. Of course I've read The Three Musketeers. Despite its contrived narrative turns, I enjoy the novel's scathing critique of our current social-political climate. Wow, that's quite an insightful review. Wait a minute. You just memorized that single sentence to sound well-read, didn't you? M maybe Would you messieurs mind lowering your voices? I can hear you squawking from the other side of the building. Ah, my apologies, monsieur. We'll keep it down. Wait, you're a librarian, aren't you? An astute observation. Yes, monsieur. As the only quiet person in the library, I am most assuredly the librarian. Well, now that we have your attention, my friend wants to ask you something. I do? Oh, right, I do. What can you tell us about Don Quixote? What can you tell us about the Spanish monarchy? You seem like a scholarly, well-read individual. I'm sure you're up-to-date on geopolitical news and the like. I don't need your praise. Spit out whatever imbecile question is in the back of your throat. Uh, well, we understand that the Spanish throne is currently under dispute. Can you give us a brief rundown of on who the contenders are? What a trivial question. Even an elementary school child can name the immediate heirs to every throne in Europe. Y yeah But for the sake of those children who slept through that class, can you refresh our memories? Hmm, very well. Pay attention, because I am not repeating myself. The current reigning monarch of Spain is Queen Renient Isabella II of the House of Bourbon, daughter of King Ferdinand VII. Upon her death, the crowd, the crown would likely fall to her husband, King Consort Francis, Duke of Cadiz, although it is certainly possible that an immediate family member could stake a claim. However, the Queen's position is currently being disputed by the Carlists, headed by the Count of Montem Montemelon. I hope that answers your questions. Did you catch all that, Sparrowson? Not a word. Monsieur, we're actually interested in a Prince Juan Corrido of Spain. I don't think I heard that name in your explanation. A Prince Juan Corrido? Is that what you said? Monsieur, I think you've been misinformed. There is no current Prince of Spain. I'm not even sure Corrido is a real name. It is certainly no line of any Spanish monarchy. How strange. What does this mean, Falcon? Well, one thing is for sure. Our client is not the Prince of Spain. <clears throat> Maybe he's a delusional lunatic, or perhaps he's involving us in some sort of con. We don't have long before the trial, but it may be in our interest to confront Prince Juan directly and get some answers. Right. Are you two quite done chit-chatting? Tell us about Don Quixote. <coughs> How about this book from a friend? What can you tell us about it? Don, Don Quixote of La Manca? It's a classic. Everybody has read it. Yeah, everybody. But for those who haven't, I'm not going to sit here and summarize a great work of literature for two imbeciles who are too lazy to read. Nor would I expect you to, monsieur. But what can you tell us about the f the physical book itself? This particular book didn't come from any library, if that's what you're asking. See, there's no library stamp or card. I assume it was required from a acquired from a bookshop, a French bookshop. If the French translation and publishing information wasn't to give away, I see. Thank you. Do you have any other questions, or can I get back to work? That's all. Don't worry, Monsieur. I think we're done here. Thanks for your time. Hmm. Then I bid you good day. All right. A new day and uh. How much time do we have? Yeah, we only have Palace of Justice. Damn. 
Can we not go to any of this? I, I, never, I wonder what happens if we actually try that, but... Oh, well, we gotta go to the Palace of Justice. I don't think we uh, collected very good evidence. I feel very unconfident. Once again, Falcon and Sparrowson find themselves waiting outside the doors of the Tribunal de Grand Instance. Are you feeling nervous, Falcon? Yes. <clears throat> of course I'm nervous. What have we learned about Prince Juan? What do we know about the real murderer? Nothing. Easy there, Falcon. We can do this. <laughs> Senor Falcon, I trust everything is in order? Absolutely. I have every intention of bringing the truth to light in this trial. Ah, such confidence. That's magnificent to see. And bringing the truth to light, you say? An admirable goal. No more jousting at an imaginary giants. All of you, cease your yammering. The door is opening. Here we go. Buon suerte, Senor Falcon. We will. <coughs> Are we ready? We are ready. Excuse me, I'm having trouble breathing. Kokoro. JJ. Falcon. Severin. Nervous? How about I be nervous? I'm not nervous. I'm as calm as a cuckoo. As a cuckoo. You're, n you're the nervous one. This whole courtroom is nervous. Oh, cool your feathers, Falcon. Hmm, terrible. You can't even maintain a stoic facade. I thought this trial would be the perfect opportunity for you to redeem your previous embarrassments. But if this is how you act before the trial has even started, why, you pompous tailed posture perfect? Oh, Judge Romulus. Damn, that is an intimidating name. And he looks just like one of the, uh, one of the people who were out there in the bonus scene we got. Order, order, let's all settle down. Court is now in session. Psst, Falcon, what is it? Is it me, or does the primary judge look hairier today? That's a different judge to the one who resided over Dame Kathleen's trial, you doofus. Oh, still, it's a little strange, isn't it? A little, I guess. It is a little, I suppose. Excuse me, Your Honor. I was under the impression that Judge Maxime would be residing over this case. Where is he? Judge Maxime has gone on temporary sick leave due to a terrible accident with a flight of stairs. But rest assured, assessors, prosecutor, defense, and members of the jury that I am more than qualified to fill his shoes. Without further ado, let's get this show underway. This is the trial of Prince Juan Corredo, who stands accused of murdering Major Howell and of conspiring to murder the king himself. Roll call. The defense is present and ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. <coughs> good, very good. I expect this to be a nice, speedy trial. I don't want to see this dragged out by technicalities and bureaucracy. Well said, Your Honor. I expect that, once the court sees the overwhelming evidence, this trial will be over in five minutes. Five minutes? He's just messing with your head, Falcon. Keep it together. So we're all on the same page? Excellent. Prosecutor, please call your first witness to the stand. Very well. I call the police officer who investigated the crime scene. I call upon Inspector Just Valerte. Step up to the stand, Inspector, and recite the oath. I, sp I swear to speak without hatred and without fear to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please recite your name and occupation for the court record. My name is Inspector Just Falerty. I'm a servant of the law, a scourge of the gutter rats. That will do, Inspector. We've all heard your monologue before. Wow, Kokoro really is going for a speed record, isn't he? Now, can you tell us what you witnessed on the morning of the 7th of January? Of course. At 10 o'clock in the morning, I was called to the Louvre's Grand Gallery by one of the King's Royal Guards. Did he just say o'clock? There I saw Prince Juan, King Louis, F Louis Philippe, the corpse of Major Howell with a rose in hand, and around two dozen citizens. The citizens and the king himself all attest to seeing Major Howell taking the rose from Prince Juan's hand and then promptly dropping dead. And what did the morgue uncover upon examination of the corpse? The coroner, deter the coroner determined with absolute certainty that Major Howell died of poisoning. Aside from a prick upon the finger, there was no sign of external harm to Major Howell's body. Therefore, the poison rose must have been the cause of death. Putting the pieces together, that does seem very implicated of the, of the prince. I have no further questions. Damn, I was hoping that the coroner's report would determine that the guy died from a freak heart attack or something. Damn, that uh, that would make for a particularly speedy trial, wouldn't it? But no, we aren't so lucky. <coughs> something else must be amiss in the old bird's testimer, testimony. Right, I'll tear it apart. Your Honor, I wish to cross-examine the witness. Falcon, wasn't it? Don't waste the court's time. A high-ranking police officer would never lie on the witness stand. <laughs> I wouldn't accuse the inspector of lying. I just wanted to make sure that every base is properly covered. Ugh, this sounds like pointless, pointless nitpicking to me, but I'll allow it for now. Go on, Falcon. Do your cross-examination. He has the right to cross-examination any witness if he wants. Judge. Select a statement to question. At 10 o'clock in the morning, that's irrelevant. 
Uh, it was called Louvre's Gun Gallery, it's all the prince, the corpse of Major Howell, the rose in hand, and around two dozen citizens, a coroner determined that Major Howell died of poisoning. Um, <clears throat> well, the only thing we really know is that the poison couldn't have acted so fast that if it was from the finger prick, that it would, uh, you know, do, you know, kill him like that instantly. So, poisoning, I guess. Inspector, you say that the coroner determined with certainty that Major Howell was killed by poison. Correct. You say the signs and symptoms were textbook. There is no possibility that his death was natural. What kind of poison was it? How was Major Howell poisoned? What kind of poison was it? Did the coroner mention specifically what kind of poison it was? He was not certain. At first, the coroner position posited that it was a plant-borne poison like that of the aconite flower. But when he learned how fast the poison had taken effect, he noted that this was atypical of aconite. Consequently, he suggested that it may have been some newly engineered concoction. A newly engineered poison, you say? Well, that only reaffirms that this was a very deliberate assassination attempt. Indeed. Do you have any other question about the poison? Yeah. Uh, how was Major Hell poisoned? How exactly was Major Hell poisoned? What was the delivery mechanism? His finger was pricked by the poison rose. He even commented out loud about it seconds before dying. All 22 citizens who witnessed the murder attested to seeing and hearing this. Is there any possibility that he was poisoned by something else? What an absurd thing to ask, JJ. You just heard that 22 people saw the victim prick his finger and die. What are you suggesting? That the pricked finger had no relation to the poisoning? That's exactly what I'm saying. Sure, let's just try it. That's exactly what I'm saying. I don't doubt that Major Howell was poisoned, but I do doubt that the rose was the cause. Unbelievable. Only a total buffoon could, foul the, could fail to draw the blatant link here. JJ, as tempting as it is to sit here and lecture you on the basics of cause and effect, I'll end this discussion painlessly. Inspector, please tell the defense that you found traces of poison on the horns of the rose itself. That should alleviate all doubt that the rose was, in fact, the poison delivery mechanism. Actually, I can't tell him that. Oh! Eat shit, bird! I dread to ask, but why not? We didn't check the rose for traces of poison. It just seemed obvious that the rose caused the poisoning, given the timing of the incident. Well then, now would be a good time to make a test. Here's a marvelous thought. We prick the finger of the defendant with the rose. If there's no poison on the rose, then Prince Juan lives and he is free to go. If the rose is poisoned, then the prince dies, but that's okay, because the punishment would be just in fitting of the crime. A marvelous suggestion. What is this, a witch trial? This isn't America, Severin. That's not how we do things here. Calm your feathers, JJ. It was clearly a joke. There are far more humane ways of testing for poison. I'm sure the inspector will perform his duty with, with due diligence. Actually, we won't be able to test the rose for poison at all. Why is that? Given the dangerous nature of the flower, it was destroyed by the police force. We burned it to ashes. Such unprofessionalism. Yeah, he's right on that. If we have no way to know whether the rose is poison, then this whole trial ought to be called into question. Nice try, JJ, but through the process of reasoning by elimination, we can still deduce with absolute certainty that the rose was poisoned. In other words, there was nothing else at the crime scene that could have caused the poisoning. Wrong. There was something else at the crime scene that could have contained the poison, something the investigation police blindly overlooked. Yeah. Chocolate wrapper. I've also got the business card, book page, poisoned rose, Don Quixote. Yeah. Yeah, we're supposedly poisoned. We don't actually have it in our inventory, but we got the chocolate wrapper. <coughs> Look at this! What am I supposed to be looking at? It is the paper wrapper to a piece of chocolate. It was found in the Louvre, the Salle de Tibre to be precise, and we can date its consumption to the day of the incident. You're not suggesting that Major Howell ate a piece of poisoned chocolate moments before he died? I most certainly am. Intriguing. Pretty convincing. Gain a little favor with the jury. Yeah, that's right, we did. <clears throat> did you see this wrapper at the crime scene for yourself, Inspector? The police force does not have the time nor resources to trawl every piece of trash at every crime scene, I'm, I'm afraid. In other words, you overlooked it. Tch, astounding unprofessionalism. The prosecution is right to be disgusted. What a disgraceful display, Inspector. I offer my apologies, Your Honor. I don't want your apologies. I want you to do your damn job pro properly. Get off the witness podium before I kick you off myself. As you wish, I'll take my leave. Until next time, Messieurs. You're shit at your job. What is he, a chicken? They're both chickens. Jeez. So let me get this straight. This chocolate wrapper was found at the crime scene? Correct. And you have reason to believe that it was consumed on the day of the incident? I do. I have an expert food-tasting witness who is willing to testify, if need be. You have a foodie witness? I don't recall anyone like that. Who on earth are you talking about, Falcon? Oh, I see. <clears throat> but do you know for certain that Major Howell consumed this chocolate? 
Well, that is a fact that we are still investigating. I see. And do you have evidence that the cho that this chocolate was in fact poisoned? Uh, again, that is something that may require a little more time to definitely prove. So then, in actuality, you do not have evidence that Major Howell consumed some poisoned chocolate. Instead, you have a solitary piece of rubbish that you plucked straight that you picked plucked straight out of the gutter. That's weak, given for you, JJ. Let's move things along. I have another witness I would like to summon. He is a man who claims to have had an excellent view of the people going in and out of the Louvre at the time of the incident. I call upon Monsieur Toussaint Kingley. Could the witness please approach the stand and recite the oath? Hello, 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 Toussaint. Okay. Hello. All right, the oath. Uh, I swear to speak without hatred and without fear, and to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth. Please state your full name and occupation for the record. My name is Toussaint Kingley, and I am a person who fishes. A person who fishes. So you are a fisherman? Oh, oh, is that how it is? I thought the French justice system was better than this. I beg your pardon. Here comes Toussaint Kingley, the kingfisher. Clearly he must be a fisherman, because, didn't you hear, all kingfishers are fishermen. Well, you are carrying a fishing rod. And, and, can a man not carry a fishing rod, reel and bait, without being branded a fisherman? Look, look, the prosecutor is carrying a riding crop. Clearly he must be a horse jockey. Oh, for pity's sake. Fine, fine, we can list your occupation as person who fishes and not fisherman. Thank you. Actually, why do you carry a riding crop, Severin? I've never seen you ride a horse. I don't know, JJ. What do you, a 30-something-year-old with no health problems, carry a cane? This is very quite off, quite far off the course. Could the prosecution please get back to the questions? Of course, Your Honor. Monsieur Kingley, is it true that you were nearby the Louvre at the time of the incident? <laughs> yes, I was sitting upon a railing of the Pont des Arts. The Pont des Arts? That's the new bridge that's just a stone's throw from the Louvre's, Louvre's south entrance, correct? That's right. And what were you doing at the time of the incident? I was fishing. Pfft, kingfishers, am I right, Falcon? So you would have plenty of opportunity to see the people who entered the, and exited the palace. Could you tell us who you saw? Well, the Louvre's a busy place. Naturally, I saw a lot of people. But at 9 a.m., I saw the king, Louis-Philippe himself, enter the building. He was surrounded by his entourage, of course. Then, around 9.30 a.m., I saw the shifty-looking fox lurking around the entrance. Your Honor, I object to the witness's use of the term shifty-looking. It's a vague and biased description. No, really. He looked super shif shifty. I saw him rubbing his paws and cackling gleefully. And then I saw him take take out a rose and carefully rub the stem. Rub the stem of a rose, you say? As if you were applying something to the flower, perhaps? Oh, well, monsieur, I really shouldn't speculate. Of course, it was wrong of me to ask such a leading question. But yeah, it definitely looked like he was putting some sort of powder on the stem. Wow, even I wasn't expecting such a bold admission. Members of the court, it sounds like what we have here is a direct witnessing of the defendant readying the murder weapon. The defense claims that the rose is never poisoned, and yet here we have a man who saw the poison with his own eyes. I smell perjury. <coughs> you do? No question. <coughs> Goddamn. You saw a shifty-looking criminal readying poison and cackling near the scene of the crime? That's not believable at all. I think you might be right. I wonder if I have any evidence that calls Tucson's story into doubt. Your Honor, I would like to cross-examine the witness. Really? This nonsense again? I just heard the witness directly describe your client readying poison on a rose. What is there to question? I'm just trying to uncover the truth, Your Honor. Ugh, fine. Do your thing. Go on, Falcon. Go make a fool out of yourself. Cross-examination. Select a statement to question. Which we'll have to do next time, because I'm all out of time for this episode, so I'm going to have to see you all in the next one. Uh, and if you made it to the end of this, uh, consider leaving a comment. That'd be pretty cool of you. Thanks. Oh, bye bye